Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to see is true. 911 emergency. Hi, I'm with uh, La Quinta and a couple of the guests that come to me. I'm an employee here. They come to me and they told me that somebody's pointing a rifle outside of one of the windows in our building. There were two individuals who were by the hot tub area who saw somebody in the room who they said they believed had what looked like a gun. And they reported it to the hotel and then the hotel called the police. The room in question was 502 and the person staying there. Okay, his name, yeah, Daniel Shaver. Just three minutes after that 911 call, Officer Philip Brailsford responds to the hotel. His body cam is recording as he eventually joins the other officers. How many bags have you got on you? There's still one just to throw in my back pocket. Sergeant Charles Langley is commanding the team and tells Brailsford to provide lethal coverage. Minutes after arriving, the team moves to the fifth floor, advancing within just 20 feet of room 502. It is there where Daniel is believed to be inside with another hotel guest named Monique Portillo. Officer Brailsford keeps his gun trained on the end of the hallway, while Sergeant Langley stands right behind him just off camera. It is Langley's voice you will hear in the minutes to come. Occupants of room 502, this is the Mason Police. Listen to my instruction. I want the female to step out. At first, no answer. Finally, another officer calls Daniel's room from the front desk, and this time, he answers. Stop! Right there! Stop! Monique comes out first. She's stunned by what she sees. Monique, you know, she has no clue what's going on. I mean, she keeps walking, and then the officer starts screaming. Stop! Daniel is next. Stop! he comes out, he sees the officers with these guns trained on him. And so what you see on the video is it going from confused to fearful. Can you both hear and understand me? Yes. All right, if you make a mistake, another mistake, there's a very severe possibility you're go both gonna get shot. Do you understand that? Yes. Thank you. Yes, all right. What the this is, shut up. I'm not here to be tactful or diplomatic with you. You listen, you obey. Then... Young lady, shut up and listen. Sergeant Langley orders Monique to crawl toward the officers before turning his attention back to Daniel. Okay, young man, you are to keep your legs crossed. Do you understand me? Sir. You are to put both of your hands, palms down, straight out in front of you. Push yourself up to a kneeling position. I said keep your legs crossed! Sorry. When you watch the video, he goes from very compliant, he's just trying to get across to the officers, that he's listening, that he is obeying. And at some point, though... I didn't say this in conversation. He put your hand in the air! Hands up in the air! You see Daniel break down. You do that again, we're shooting you. Do you understand? Please do not shoot me. Then listen to my instructions. I'm trying to do Don't talk! Listen! Hands straight up in the air. Your hands go back in the small of your back or down. We are going to shoot you. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. Daniel Shaver in the video is crying and begging for his life. He's saying, please don't shoot me. And then they say, crawl forward. And they scream at him, crawl forward. Crawl towards me. We want to warn you. What happens next is extremely disturbing. Crawl towards me. Yes, sir. <laughs> He's crawling forward and he's wearing baggy basketball shorts. And his hand goes slightly up to readjust his shorts. And that's when they open fire. Don't go! Five shots from Officer Brailsford's gun, eight tenths of a second, and Daniel Shaver falls dead. Get him on. It is only later that officers will discover Shaver is unarmed. Just after the shooting, Monique tells police that an hour earlier, Daniel invited Luis and her to his room for a nightcap. This is the first time you met him was tonight in the elevator? Yeah. Okay. 
Monique says while in the room, Luis asked to see the pellet gun Daniel used for work. Unbeknownst to them, a couple downstairs saw the gun near the window and had the hotel call police. Did he ever point it at you no. or threaten you, no. Luis? No. Shortly after that, Monique says Luis left the room to use his phone. And the next thing she knew... You guys called phone and that's call. when that guy said, he's like, hey, it's the police, they want us to go outside. Okay, then what happened? They shot him. The next morning, Lainey can't reach her husband. For him not to answer my call when I was taking the kids to school, which was our everyday normal. I mean, I knew something was wrong immediately. She says she contacted police but got nowhere, which led to a terrifying thought and a desperate call. Eventually, I had the intuition to call the medical examiner. I gave them his name and date of birth, and they said that they had a file. A realization she says still feels like a nightmare. So, oh my God, my kids just lost their dad and I have to tell them. Just before telling her daughters, Lainey asks her friend to take this picture. Because I knew that from then on, like, nothing would be the same for them, and that was like the last little bit of innocence I could ever capture. Their lives changed forever. And approximately two months later, Officer Philip Brailsford's life would change as well. In a surprise move, he suddenly charged with Daniel Shaver's murder. This was absolutely murder and I think it was cold-blooded murder. Daniel Shaver in the video is crying and begging for his life. He's saying, please don't shoot me. It should tell the police officers who were there that he posed no threat. Mycellus also questions why Brailsford, with just two years on the force, was providing lethal cover. Here in Philip Brailsford, we had a 25-year-old kid who had prior excessive force incidents before this. In fact, though he was ultimately cleared, Brailsford had been investigated at least three times before for using an inappropriate amount of force. On the night of the shooting, Brailsford was armed with his personal AR-15 assault rifle, which was allowed by Mesa PD. But it's what was etched on Brailsford's gun cover that really raised eyebrows. The etching on the AR-15 says you're blanked on it. What did that tell you about this individual? told me that, you know, he was aggressive. Police officers used to, and there's some are still called peace officers. There is nothing peaceful about that inscription. If you're willing to etch that into your gun, you view your job as a police officer like a video game, a first-person shooter. Don't go! Deadly force is absolutely supposed to be um, the last option. Here, not only did it appear to be their first option, they were going to shoot to kill him the moment Sergeant Langley started barking those outrageous and horrible commands. Was the person who killed Daniel Shaver a trigger-happy cop or an officer afraid for his life? Nearly two years after the shooting, the second-degree murder trial of Philip Mitchell Brailsford is about to begin. Prosecutors call in Detective Paul Seip, the agent assigned to investigate the shooting. I work in the homicide unit. Seip testifies that after watching the video, he didn't see the imminent threat needed to justify Brailsford's shooting. Did he ever say anything threatening to the officers? No. Did he ever wave anything at them that could have been misconstrued even as a weapon? No. But the defense called its own crucial witness the man at the center of it all. Can you state your name? Philip Mitchell Brailsford. A little nervous? Just a little bit. Brailsford says the stage was set when officers got the call of a potential shooter in room 502. Based on your training, uh, do you uh, believe them to be armed until determined otherwise? Absolutely. Now, as coverage officer, what was your role? Um, I had one role, and it was a simple role. I'm responsible for everyone else, including myself, and I need to keep the scene safe. He says that's what was going through his head when Daniel Shaver was in that hallway. At this point, what are you focused on? I'm um, focused on the hands. All right. And why? The hands are what kill us. We're trained that if any action is going to be had against you, it will start with the hands. It's why he says he made that split second final decision. Moving directly to the side 
It looked exactly like someone was drawing a pistol. And to prove it, Brailsford's defense team brought in the police academy instructor who trained him. The hands are what are going to hurt us or kill us. So what we teach on this, is that's what you have to look at. When the trainer tells the jury that I trained him in this exact situation to do exactly what he did, I think that was persuasive, but I think that's the heart of the corruption here because that training is wrong. You're taught that you need to be trained to literally shoot to kill anybody if you, if you have even a slight fear, and that would be justifiable. That's not how you train an officer to act reasonably. Shaver's widow's attorney says Brailsford's fear was unreasonable, and when officers saw Shaver begging for his life, they should have de-escalated the situation. There were so many times where he clearly submitted, where he laid on the ground. Even when he put his hands behind his back, he wanted them to cuff him, um, to defuse the situation. This is a difficult question to ask someone like you. That movement that your husband made, where he reached his arm back, mm -hmm. do you think an officer could perceive it as somebody reaching for a gun? I think that officers are trained to say that they perceived a threat. Whether any of those officers truly perceived a threat, I don't know. Um, there are six there and only one opened fire. I think that speaks for itself. And it's true, another officer on scene that night, Brian Elmore, seen here on body cam, testified that he didn't see the threat Brailsford did. Finally. All rise for the jury. After six weeks of testimony, two days of deliberations, the verdict. We, the jury, do find the defendant, Philip Mitchell Brailsford, on the charge of count one, second degree murder, not guilty. And it was not guilty on a lesser charge of reckless manslaughter as well. The jury was basically pushed to believe, if you believe that he followed the training and protocol that he was given at the Mesa Police Department, then you must acquit. After the trial, Laney and her attorneys decide to release the full uncut body cam footage to the public with the hope that the Department of Justice will step in and take action. Do not shoot me. If we can get officers held accountable for unjustified shootings, I think that Daniel wouldn't have died in vain. Since the shooting, Philip Brailsford has been fired from the force for unrelated reasons.